Hey there, Grumpy Old Fart here. Be sure to check me out over on Rumble. There you'll find all of my stuff from YouTube, plus my political and social commentary and weekly current events, which YouTube frowns on. Links to my Rumble channel, as well as my other YouTube channels, and links to let you order my books are in the description of this video. If you enjoy my content, please like, subscribe, share, and comment. I welcome your comments, even if you disagree with me. Now, on with the video. Hey there, Grumpy Old Fart here. I'm doing a Star Trek the role-playing game story. I'm calling this The Science Wizard. For those of you who don't know, there is a prime directive in Starfleet and Star Trek. Uh, it's called the Non-Interference Directive. Basically, it's the, it, Starfleet is not allowed to interfere in the development of a primitive world. Starfleet officers swear to give their lives to prevent that from happening. Okay. Now, for my friend Mark was running a game, and I was the security officer. My friends James, Larry, and Randy were playing the captain, the executive officer, and the science officer, respectively. We had a lot of fun in Mark's game. He ran a lot of really great games. Our mission was to extract a covert anthropological group studying a primitive culture on a newly discovered world. Uh, the group had been there for a year in a hidden camp on a cliff. They had hidden cameras and drones and were there to study the medieval culture only. We pulled into orbit and the chief engineer was left in... Yeah, Mark got this off the Star Trek The Next Generation scenario. So, just so you know. Uh, we pulled into orbit and the chief engineer was left in charge while we all beamed down. The camp was deserted. The equipment was all gone and the only foot trail was to the south. We checked in and then, you know, ex explained to the ship what was going on. And then we followed the trail. We made it to a hill overlooking a small town. As we observed, we saw four men patrolling the streets in padded armor and with spears, and each one of them had a sword. On their hips, they were wearing phasers. James ordered me to scout around, so I circled the town quickly and quietly, trying to gather clues. When I returned, I reported that there were three people hanging from trees on the far side of the of the town and they were wearing federation clothing and insignias that was three of the four men of the team james ordered us to retrieve the four phasers so larry and i crept up on the guards and stunned them to get their phasers james and randy crept into town to find the fourth man he had set himself up as a wizard using the science equipment from his encampment to impress the the, the locals and basically, he was ruling the town, and he was making plans to rule the world. Uh, the two of them came back, and we waited until dark so that we could sneak in and find the fourth team member, the science wizard. We stunned him and collected all of the equipment. James called the ship and had us beamed up along with the three dead anthropologists. Being able to beam up is cool because you you do, we didn't have to trek all that equipment through the through the hills or whatever. Mark expected us to confront the guy in the town and have a big fight. James played it smart, and was now instead of a. And, and now instead of a chapter, on a new king, the history books of that world would have a footnote about some weirdo pretending to be a wizard. Yeah, <clears throat> you know who suddenly disappeared overnight. Um, that's the thing about role-playing games like that uh the game master can set up whatever he wants you know, the, the scenario but it's up to the players to decide how they do it mark had intended for us to have the huge confrontation and have this big uh i don't know i guess moral conundrum over the prime directive and all of that not the three we got all the dead bodies and the three you know of the three anthropologists and the fourth guy, we stunned him and beamed him up, and we, we were able to get the phasers pretty easily. And that was it. That was, the, that was the scenario. Mark was a little disappointed that we'd went that route, but it was a lot safer for us and a lot better for the culture of that planet. The idea of the non-interference directive, directive would have been further violated if we had done what he wanted us to do. The way we did it, it was a surgical strike. We got exactly what we needed out of there. And the society could self-correct. It was a lot better that way. Sometimes playing smarter is better than playing harder. You know what I mean? Anyway, 
I hope this finds everybody well. You folks have a good one. God bless one and all. Devo Poland, a scientific representative of a pacifist race called the Gandiri, is sent away as an exchange officer. His objective, to learn the one skill his species never developed, to fight. And he's sent to learn that skill from the one species who does it better than any other in the galaxy, humans. If you like science fiction with an upbeat military tone, check out my novel, Vanguard One.